Okay, this is the last part of global resource consumption and security for IV geography. So this is about resource stewardship strategies, and the subtopics are the circular value of this. Oopsie, the value of the circular economy as the system's approach for effective cycling, and then the role of the UN Sustainable Development Goals and progress made towards meeting them. Okay, so first we're going to look at some definitions. So the value of the circular economy is a systems approach for effective cycling. So what's the tragedy of the commons? It explains the lack of control over the way common resources are used and how the selfish acts of a few individuals can destroy the resource for others. Resource stewardship is a concept suggesting that humans can use resources in such a way that they will be available to future generations. This will not only create environmental sustainability but social equity concerning resources. The circular economy is an economy that preserves natural capacity, optimizes resource use, and reduces loss through managing finite stocks and renewable flows. It builds capital rather than reducing it. And then finally, biodegradable items are compostable materials that can be retained and turned into productive materials. Non-biodegradable items are items that contain valuable metals, and they're often included in the technical cycle, such as electronics, which we'll go into depth now. Okay, so consumption happens only in biological cycles where food and biologically based materials such as cotton <laughs> and wood cotton and wood are designed to feed back into the system through processes like composting and anaerobic digestion. These cycles regenerate living systems such as soil which provide renewable resources for the economy. On the other hand, technical cycles recover and restore products, components and materials through strategies like reuse, repair, remanufactured or in the last resort recycling. And this links back to the other video about the waste hierarchy. Okay, so this is a diagram of the um, circular economy and this is the biological cycle, this is the technical cycle. Okay, so let's see so from the consumer okay i'm trying to make this simple okay so here we have the circular economy from the ellen MacArthur foundation so this is a systems diagram showing how we can kind of like transform biological cycles and technical cycles to make them sustainable so for biological cycles it's basically creating products so that they give back to the environment and kind of regenerate the biosphere and creates this idea of renewable consumption and then we have on the other hand technical cycles which is like basically trying to create products which can be reused or returned and refurbished um like re return to the producers and like reused again and again sustainably and it's basically like a combination of the two which then minimizes systematic leakage and negative externalities okay so this is basically the whole idea of the circular economy and now we're going to move on to the sdgs so as you probably know these are the united nations sustainable development goals there's 17 goals and we're going to focus on a few of them now so the ones kind of concerned with um with what's it called uh resource stewardship kind of tend to be affordable and clean energy industry innovation and infrastructure sustainable cities and communities responsible consumption and production but in essence all of them can be involved in some respect so we're going to look at two examples the first example is loofah farm so what is the resource where's the location it's in montreal and it's a company called loofah farm that has started enacting the vision where food production is integrated into the urban fabric loofah farm's approach makes use of unused spaces minimizes resource use producing fresh healthy food all year even in the dead of winter so what are the current issues relating to the issue of like agriculture in the economy so the world's urban population is growing rural land is becoming more degraded and constantly pushed back as cities expand and the economic and environmental costs of our current linear food system are rising and things are set to get worse how has the problem been solved cities have acres of unused roof space which can be used to grow crops rooftop farms are perfect for rainwater irrigation as well as benefiting from free energy from the sun and residual heat rising from the buildings below Distribution costs are greatly reduced, taste and freshness increased due to the proximity of customers. So how does this link with the concept of the SDGs and the circular economy? So this links with the sustainable development goals because Luva Farms believes the current food system is not sustainable and that cities need to transition to a new food production model that is self-sufficient. 
and minimizes waste. Overall, the advantages of rooftop farming are vast, but saving energy, water, and reducing waste are the main factors in using it to further sustainable development. And it links to this idea of regeneration, as we saw here, and like kind of giving back to the environment when you're producing products. And it obviously here, it links to many different SDGs, affordable and clean energy, responsible consumption and production, um, but also many more life on land, life on below water, because it um, can actually minimize the impacts of water quality that would maybe happen in the natural environment, such as in like um, farms in farms that aren't like um, kind of contained. Okay, now we're going to look at Stella McCartney's circular fashion. So, what's the resource and where's the location? Lifestyle. It's a lifestyle clothing brand based in the U.S., but Italy is their biggest sourcing country, with seventy-six percent of all manufacturing and material suppliers. Although significantly smaller, other key sourcing countries include Hungary, Spain, Portugal, China, and India. So what are the current issues relating to the fashion economy? The systems of individuals of society rely on that's individuals of society rely on to make, sell, and dispose of clothing are basically broken according to Stella McCartney's brand and it's operated in almost completely linear way. Large amounts of non-renewable resources are continually extracted to produce widely used products, which largely end up going into landfill or incineration, which we did cover in a previous video. So how's the problem been solved by Stella McCartney's brand? Well, the company is now involved in several initiatives and partnerships. It co-hosted the launch of the Ellen MacArthur um, Foundations report, and this is made by Ellen MacArthur Foundation, so it's very closely linked with the idea of circular economy and this like innovation and um, these new ideas. So, okay, and they also use Econil, Econil, um, which is a sustainable form of nylon. Um, they provide support in Mongolia to reverse the desertification. Of precious grasslands. This is a problem caused by a rise in demand for Kashmir. They source their viscose forest fibers in a way that protects and enriches ancient forests and the species that live there. So it's actually the only brand that can trace viscose right back to the forest it came from and is committed to making sure that the ecosystems they source from are conserved. So how does this link with the concept of sustainable development and the circular economy? Well, they are using innovative materials, promoting restorative farming practices and designing products that are made to last. This links to climate action, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, as well as life on land. And it clearly links to the idea of a circular economy. Um, as you can see from here, they phase out substances of concern and microfiber release. Um, this is in the textile economy, and then they increase clothing utilization, radically improve recycling, which leads to anaerobic digestion and composting and other material streams, and then they make effective use of resources and move to renewable inputs. Um, and they also get our source from renewably sourced feedstock. So this idea of a circular economy rather than a linear one. And here are some other core partners that are involved with this idea of circular fashion.